Yeah, so I'm going to um, just show you a timeline to give you an idea of just, I'm showing, uh, let me make this larger. Two, three. This is kind of our, our, our milestone set between now and the end of the summer, August 28th. We've got these big chunks, uh, breaking, them, breaking these down into development milestones. And what I'm showing you today is really just find courses here and save and I just want to highlight that as we're looking at find courses, one way to find a course is I have an idea of exactly which course I need, or I just want to sort of peruse or, or browse by keyword, or I just want to look at all English 100 level courses. That's what we're showing you here. What we're currently working on, but I don't really have this ready to demo because we're, we're in the midst of it right now, the idea of I want to take this, I, I want to major in biology, so then what courses would I need to take? That's going to come later. So I, I just wanted to give you that context so you're thinking, oh, wow, they've, they've just simplified fine courses to just the keywords. Uh, we, we realize that it's more than that. But, um, but when, we, when we started doing the analysis, we looked at from beginning to end what would a student need to do in order to, to get courses into their plan. And we realized at least here at the University of Washington, we didn't have a really effective uh, course searching tool. Uh, and so that's where we started. So I'm actually going to blow this up a little bit more so you can't see what's on the right-hand side. But that way, I make sure everybody can see this. Uh, what we have here at the University of Washington is we have three campuses. So we wanted to allow students, if they knew which campus they were focused on, to go ahead and search for that immediately. But this could be, be changed for other universities. And then um, this drop-down would dynamically uh, update, and I say would, we don't have that connection in yet, but essentially whenever a time schedule or sections are actually offered, uh, then we would show that quarter information. Um, I think right now, for example, our summer 2012 time schedule isn't really available, but this is just kind of a, a demo to show you. Um, one more caveat before I go much further, you might be underwhelmed by the grayness of what you're seeing. This is uh, developed pretty light as far as visual design. We're waiting on KRAD for some, some changes, and once that comes through, then we'll have our uh, fabulous user experience designer uh, start working on the, the visual design on this. Um, so anyway, uh, if I wanted to go in and, and have a look at all English classes, and I, I'm an, let's say I'm an English major, and I know that ENGL is the, the course prefix, I can go ahead and and search for English courses. Um, this right now, none of the cache is set up, so it's, the performance is a little bit slow. But when we do have the cache, it's, it's pretty good performance. So I've got a return of English courses. And over on the left-hand side, I'm able to then narrow these down. Um, and let's say I just need one more course for next quarter. And it's, that is you know, four to five credits. That's about what I need. If I only took three, I'm not going to be a full-time student, and I don't want to do that. So I've got my four or five credits. And I'm looking for next quarter, so I'm going to pick things that are scheduled for spring 2012. And so now I've got about 91 courses, and that's quite a few. So I might start looking through here. Realize, you know, It'd be really nice. At the University of Washington, we have these general education requirements that students live and die by, at least the undergraduate students do. And so perhaps I might select one of those requirements that I can go ahead through and, and, and pick a course. Um, Shakespeare, you can, cannot get enough of Shakespeare. I'll go in here and just look at this course. The course details page is really going to serve as the center pivot place where we're going to display any course-related information. If you want to find out about, more about that course, here's where you go. Um, and we found that it was important to highlight where are we pulling this information from. We found that our students are pretty savvy in knowing things that come from the course catalog can only be trusted so much. But if it's coming from the time schedule, I might be able to, to you know, there's a little bit more trust in the information that's coming from that. Um, so a student might come in here and then see the, that course and decide to either save it or flag it. We're still working through some of those labels. Um, or actually add it to their plan. After I show you a couple other things about the, the search tool, I'll show you what I mean by saving the course. Um, 
But then let's say I want to go in and look for just a general keyword. I typed in wildlife, and this is just going to do a match on the title and the description of the, the uh, course catalog. And I come back with quite a few results. And again, I can go through and decide to, to filter this down by some pieces. Well, one thing nice that comes through is that you then get to see at the university uh, what types of curriculum areas is wildlife actually interested in. So exposing that information and making it somewhat discoverable. I'm really curious to see if there are students who say, oh, ESRM, what is that? And I could go through and uh, search for courses on ESRM and in sort of a, an informal way discover a little bit more about what's available at the university. Um, so that just kind of gives you a little idea. We've got some weird quirks at the UW where we've got spaces in our curricular names. And so this is classical archaeology, but yet I'm still able to get that back. And if you take the space out, and you know, so we kind of fought with some little quirky bits. But um, some of the things that we'd like to improve, uh, one is when you hover over any of these elements that we'd have a, a, a tool tip to let you know what those acronyms mean, especially for the incoming freshmen. But for prospective students, obviously, as well. Um, another piece is that if I type in classical uh, archaeology, that I would get back uh, CLAR courses, that we have that translation. I don't know. Those are both um, listed as enhancements, and we'll see how quickly we can actually add those two pieces. Um, but I think that's a pretty, pretty good representation of what the, the course search tool does. Um, are there any questions before I show you the, the saved list? Okay. So then if I go through and I've got these um, various courses and I found one, um, Athenian topography I've just been dying to take, um, I'm going to add that to my watch list. I think we're going to abandon the phrase watch list just so you know we've kind of been language, but I've saved that over here. and. Essentially, the intent there is that a student wants to watch it, wants to consider taking it at some point, but they aren't quite ready to add that to a specific quarter. Um, and I think that'll come in really handy as students are looking out a year, year and a half away, and they're, they're not sure that they can completely trust some of the information that they're getting from the catalog about what might be offered. And then what I'm showing you here is a, a full view of what might be on your watch list. There's still more details to be added to this, but you can here are some courses that you're considering taking, and, and then you can go ahead and add those to your plan. Um, currently, we're working on uh, developing, if you were to click on any of these items, you'd get a popover that would appear off to the left, and then you would see more information about that course on the same screen, and then the ability to add it to a quarter to just give them some more kind of a richer experience on the same screen without getting disoriented by going off to that other page. Um, so that's as much as I have to demo right now. Uh, but I did want to show some really early screenshots that um, have not been really vetted in any way. But just to give you an idea of what we're thinking about, let me go back to this uh, screen. So I've showed you what we've got for find courses and then this save to list um, and, and notify milestone. But as we're going into the audit and explore, here at the University of Washington, our, our output from DARS or UACHIEVE, the degree auditing uh, system, is text-based. And it's pretty uh, reminiscent of 1985. So we're, we're looking at both just the visual display on how can we make that easier to parse, um, but then also adding some functionality to that. So this can't be believed or, or expected to, this is probably not what's going to end up happening. This is a, barely our, our team has looked at it. Um, but it's the idea of if I go in here and I've got a, a, a BA, just to get some, some better feedback about where am I at, uh, this, the recommendations we know we all really wouldn't want to include there. And then I've got my detailed degree audit, and I've got some, some requirements by section. I think the takeaway from this is that we're really going to be looking to allow students to expand and collapse different sections of their audit and allow them to emphasize or to really focus on the things that aren't completed. And based on things that aren't completed, what are some courses that I might want to take in order to, uh, 
to handle those. So again, I can't stress highly enough about how unvetted this wireframe is and how unlikely our end product will look like this, but just wanted to give you an idea of what we're up to. Um, I think that pretty much concludes, Carol, what I was planning on talking about, um, unless you want me to go through the milestones a little bit further about Yeah, that. I, I think that would be helpful. So we have a sense of, of you know, by the end of milestone five, what, what will be there. It really it looks like milestone four is where you get into the actual, what we've been thinking of learning plan, which is mapping out courses in the calendar view. Yes. 